Welcome to the Late Night Gamer. It's been a while. Welcome to the Late Night Gamer. Warfighter. It's been a while, but uh, today we are doing from DG Games. Warfighter. The Late Night Gamer. Warfighter. We're going to play it solitaire. So let's just open up the box. So as normal by DVG games, the game, the, the box is packed with stuff. Plastic soldiers, some special dice, and tons of cards. So let's just go through the components and see what we need for gameplay. Right, so this is the map where we are going to play out uh, the game. Uh, it's a thin paper map or some kind of wax, so it seems durable. But uh, I don't, I'm not particularly fond of this map because it forces you to put your cards sideways. And you, what you will be doing is that you will be uh, laying out a row of cards in this direction of locations. So instead of putting them like this, you're meant to put them like this. And that's a little bit confusing. So, well, actually, I'm not going to use this map. I'm going to play on the board, or on, on, the, on the table itself. So we're just going to lay out the cards like this as we progress through the game. So the idea of the game is that we are a squad of soldiers represented by these miniatures. And we are going to lay out locations. And move from location to location towards our goal. And while we do that, we will be facing enemies that we need to kill off. Or events. But let's just set up the game and let's just start playing. So um, these miniatures, I'm not too fond of them. Well, I mean, they look okay, but you have to memorize which soldier is represented by this miniature. So instead I'm just going to use the counters that comes with the game. here. So this is soldier number one and this miniature doesn't have a number so you have to find a way to remember which soldier is number one and which is number two and three and so forth. I'm using counters instead. So what also comes uh, with the game are these dice, these bullet dice which you are supposed to roll. This is a d6 and this is a d10. So basically you just roll them like this and you see what number that comes up. So this is, not, this is a 2 and this is a 5 and this is a 9. No, I don't like that either so I'm going to use normal dice. Sorry about that. <laughs> I mean I guess they're fine, they're just a little bit unusual, that's all. So. So in the games there are three sets of enemies. You can uh, face the cartel, drug cartels, in a jungle fight, or you can face the insurgent, the Middle East insurgent forces, or the Middle East military forces. And, and the difficulty scales from from the cartel to the insurgents to the military, Middle East military. So more and more difficult. I barely played this game, so. <laughs> Um, perhaps the, the the cartels are the ones we, ones we should uh, choose to see if we can beat the game on the easy level first. So we will be fighting the cartels. Well, actually, there are videos out there already with the cartels. So, well, with the risk of being taken down very early, we can go and fight the insurgents instead. Huh? Let's do that. Let's fight the the Middle East insurgents. That means that we'll be fighting in the Middle East and we need to pull out the um, Middle East locations which will form the path towards our goal. And these, um, these terrain cards has to be shuffled in the action card pile. So um, that's going to take a while, so just hang on while I do that. Okay, then we pull out the mission card deck from the region we are fighting in, in, in the Middle East now, and we will randomly take one of the mission cards, and this will be also our starting location, so we will take this, 
This is short and sweet. It says here mission. And it says the number of resources we get to spend buying soldiers and equipment. The time we have until we need to finish the mission. Only seven turns. Objective is only three spots away, so we only have to progress three areas. And the loadout, which is um, how much in the individual soldiers can carry, are not modified. So we'll be starting here and we'll move in this direction. And as I discover location cards, I will be putting them out on this track until we get to number three, which is our objective. And in this game, the objective is the insurgent chieftain. We're going to take out the chieftain. His objective is in a structure. And we need to kill the chieftain. To, to kill him, we need to defeat a cover roll of six and inflict three kills. And any hostiles that are on this card will screen the chieftain. So what that means, uh, we will, I will show what that means when we get to it. Our resources for this game was 27, so we will have four hostiles on this card. Or four hostile points. It's going to be very short. This is number one. So there will be one more location card and then we will meet and try to take out the chieftain. So, so then we need to select our soldiers. And basically there are three types of soldiers in the game. There are player soldiers, like this one. He has a cost of 28 and a health of 6, which is also his hand of cards that we will draw. A loadout, it's, it's, that's just how much equipment he can carry, that's a limit of 12. And an unarmed combat of 10. This guy is also a veteran. So he gets an extra action per turn. Normally a player soldier gets two actions per turn. This is his movement value. Well, this is a quite costly guy, so we're not going to take him for sure. There are two other types of soldiers as well. These are the non-player soldiers. They don't get action cards. And they come with a set of equipment. This guy will have a M62. Sorry, an M16A2 rifle, a scope, and some sniper training. And this is also his cost, and this cost includes his weaponry. And that's a difference from the player soldiers, which where you have to buy the equipment in addition to his player cost. Then there's the squad soldiers. They don't have any equipment in that sense, and no ammunition, so they can't run out of ammunition, which is a advantage. And they have a fixed table here determining uh, how they will, uh, what they need to roll in order to inflict wounds on the enemy. So this game only gives us 27 resources, and that's not much. We need at least one player soldier, or uh, or else we won't get any um, action cards. Perhaps I have, will take Holt. He has a movement of 18, and I would like him to have some weaponry. That can help us. So the weapon cards, it's a big pile of weapon cards. And there's oops, everything from rifles and shotguns. There are mines, there are grenades, there are rocket launchers or grenade launchers. There are MP7 close assault weapon which do not fire outside of the card their soldiers are on, range zero, and so forth. So, I mean, and every type of weaponry comes with a specific set of ammunition. So this uses, a, uses 762 ammunition and five of them is included. This is 556. Six for the Scar L rifle. So let's just think a little bit. I think I will take something that can uh, kill in close and in long range. So I'm going to equip this guy with the 
M16 rifle that is a 5, cost, uh, cost of 5 so my dude here has a loadout of 13 so he can have 13 points with him so I don't think he will be using that so he has 5 ammunition no sorry I should have 6 like that so this rifle can hit at range 0 and range 1 and we are not going very far so that should be fine this will be my soldier number one and he will be represented by this cheat on the card so he will start here this is range one the card that will pop up here uh, this is range zero and the card that will pop up here will be range one um, now I need to mention something about combat or else and uh, you won't understand my choice right, so say I want to attack this enemy with this rifle first I need to select the mode I will fire my rifle in if I fire it in semi mode I will be rolling 1d10 if I fire it in burst mode I will be rolling 2 and auto mode is 3d10s so why wouldn't I do that why wouldn't I always fire it in auto well that is because of the reload value if one of my dice that I roll has a value of 1 or 2 that is the reload value or lower I will be spending an ammunition and when I do that of course my ammunition supplies is sort of is depleted so the greater number of dice I choose to roll the greater the chance I have of run out of ammo so if this guy is at range 0 I have to roll a 7 or higher to inflict a wound on him I also need to defeat his cover roll because he will be taking cover on his card and the card can also give a modifier to this um, cover but uh, if it doesn't then his cover value is 3 meaning that I have to roll a 3 or higher in order to defeat the cover okay. with that in mind why did I tell you all of this right now well because my target in this mission is the chieftain that lives on this card and this chieftain has a cover of six so that means that I have to get a six on my roll oops and not only that I have to inflict three kills now that is going to be very difficult and take a lot of time so let's see if I can find some weapon that can help me uh, with that cover so because this guy is inside the structure I can take with me this M2 munition basically a bomb and I can then add 5 to attack and penetration roll against vehicles and structures meaning that if I use this bomb then I will add 5 to my die roll and I will hit him every time so it cost one point to bring this along for every bomb I take so if I take three of these that should be three points and I just put them on the card like this yes so now I have used so what, what have I used 18 plus 5 plus 3 that's 26. Oh, I used 26 out of 27 resources. Ikes. Okay. Uh, well, I didn't want him to go in alone, but there is nobody that has a value of 1. Oh, no, 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 no. That was not good. Perhaps I need to take another guy then. Okay, so I'm going to swap out Holt for, um, for this guy, for Giacomelli, 9. That was a bit difficult. Let me present my squad. Soldier number one, Giacomelli. He is armed with a M16 rifle with some M2 ammunition. And he also has a M67 grenade. So the cost here should be 9 for the soldier, 5 for the rifle that is 14 
three for the bombs that's 17 and one for the M67 grenade that should be 18 and he can only carry 11 points but that's fine rifle is five and it's three for the bombs and one for the grenade so he's within 11 soldier number two is Noor and he is a non-player soldier he is costing five and that's including the weapon M4 carabine that should be 23 points and Tara soldier number three is Aguirre which is a squad soldier so he doesn't get so he, he won't have any uh, he, he haven't any weapon cards with him but he can do ranged attacks and um, he has only two hit points when he has two hit points he can do one action on a range one his kill is seven and on the range um, zero his kill number is six so the closer the better and he cannot run, run out of ammunition so what I could have done but I didn't do in this game was that I could choose one of these equipment cards and add on to to the equipment and it's um, sorry yeah and this is this equipment are you know scopes for weapons um, there are some grip that will modify the die roll there's some radio and there's some GPS there's even a drone or a, is it a drone? I don't know yeah drone and some flashbangs so these are all um, equipment that are not weaponry that could, that could um, uh, help you in your quests so to speak also some of the cards are skill cards and this augments the soldier's abilities um, for instance this is an excellent thing, it's a sniper training so when you're at long range you can attack without spending an action squad fire and you will add a modifier to the die roll basically that's what this game is about it's about maximizing the results of or the probability on your dice and the skill cards and the equipment cards help you do just that so this is my setup this is my soldiers and I have taken a hand of six cards six action cards to this player soldier because he has a health of six so we'll be using six cards and I have my dice ready I'll be counting the turn numbers by this d20 so we start at seven perhaps I'll put it here because the mission card stated that time is seven so as you can see every soldier has a number one two three and there's also some cheats that I will randomly pull out during the game that will indicate which soldier is being targeted so the cheats for soldier number one two and three are going in the mummy cup which is my standard uh, cheat drawing cup I'll be putting on an inactive timer marker on the target card so I know I haven't activated that one yet and we are ready to start playing